China faces a stark choice. Watch its northern regions wither from water scarcity or undertake a $62 billion gamble to artificially divert rivers across the country. The stakes? The lives of millions and the future of entire ecosystems. In this documentary, we'll examine the South-North Water Transfer Project, exploring its three main routes and their potential impacts. You'll learn how this massive undertaking could address China's water crisis or potentially trigger ecological disasters and international conflicts. By the end, you'll understand why this project is generating both hope and concern. Picture two Chinas, a lush, water-rich south and a parched, thirsty north. This stark contrast isn't just a geographical quirk, it's the heart of a crisis that's been brewing for centuries. China's water distribution problem has deep historical roots. For millennia, the country's northern regions have grappled with limited water resources, while the south enjoyed abundance. This imbalance, once manageable, has now reached a critical point. Climate change, rapid industrialization and a growing population have turned water scarcity in the north from a chronic issue into an acute emergency. The effects of this water crisis are far-reaching and increasingly severe. In Beijing, groundwater levels have plummeted by over 300 meters in the past four decades. The iconic Yellow River, once China's lifeblood, now runs dry for extended periods each year. Lakes and wetlands are disappearing at an alarming rate, with over half of China's 50,000 rivers vanishing since the 1990s. The scarcity is reshaping life in northern China. Farmers struggle to irrigate their crops, forcing many to abandon their land. Industries, from steel mills to tech companies, face production cuts due to water shortages. In cities, residents contend with strict water rationing and skyrocketing prices for this basic necessity. The human toll is equally devastating. Rural communities are breaking apart as young people migrate to water-rich areas in search of stability. Those who remain face deteriorating health conditions due to contaminated water sources and increased air pollution from dried up riverbeds. China's agricultural heartland is under threat. The North China Plain, responsible for half of the country's wheat production, is seeing yields decline as aquifers run dry. This not only jeopardizes China's food security, but could have global implications for grain markets. As rivers shrink and lakes vanish, ecosystems are collapsing. The Bayangdian wetlands, once teeming with wildlife, have shrunk by 80% in recent decades. Species unique to these habitats face extinction, disrupting entire food chains and biodiversity. With each passing year, the situation grows more dire. But the Chinese government isn't standing idle. They've been working on an ambitious solution one that rivals the Great Wall in its audacity and scale. Enter the South-North Water Transfer Project. This massive undertaking aims to artificially redirect water from the Yangtze River Basin to the parched northern regions. It's a $62 billion bet that China can reshape its geography to solve a centuries-old problem. But this is no simple feat of engineering. The project involves three main routes spanning thousands of kilometers, tunneling through mountains and crossing major rivers. It's said to become the largest water diversion project in human history, capable of transferring 44.8 billion cubic meters of water annually, equivalent to the flow of the Yellow River. As we dive deeper into this colossal endeavor, we'll explore each route's unique challenges and the staggering engineering feats required to make this vision a reality. The question remains, can human ingenuity overcome nature's imbalance, or will this massive gamble create more problems than it solves? Throughout history, China has been known for its monumental engineering feats. But what if I told you their latest project makes the Great Wall look like child's play? The South-North Water Transfer Project isn't just big, it's reshaping the very geography of China through three distinct routes, each with its own set of mind-boggling challenges. At its core, this ambitious project aims to connect China's four main rivers, 
the Yangtze, Yellow, Huai and Hai. The goal? To redirect water from the water-rich south to the part north along three main canals, the eastern, central and western routes. Each route serves a unique purpose and faces its own set of engineering hurdles. The eastern route takes water from the lower reaches of the Yangtze River and channels it northward through a series of canals. This route is designed to quench the thirst of the North China Plain, including the provinces of Jiangsu and Shandong, as well as the major city of Tianjin. It's not just about moving water, it's about sustaining agriculture and industry in these vital regions. The route has already made significant progress, with water reaching Tianjin in 2017. Moving westward, we encounter the Central Route, a marvel of engineering that carries water from the Han River to several regions, including Hubei and Henan. What sets this route apart is its reliance on gravity to move water from source to endpoint, a feat that required increasing the height of the Danjiangku Dam from 157 meters to 170 meters. This route is crucial for supplying water to major cities like Beijing and Tianjin, and its major construction was completed in 2014. But it's the western route that truly pushes the boundaries of what's possible. Still in its planning stages, this route aims to provide water to the underpopulated regions of northwest China, including Xinjiang and Qinghai. The scale is staggering. It's designed to divert approximately 60 billion cubic meters of water per year from the ecologically fragile Qinghai Tibet Plateau. This involves creating an artificial river known as the Red Flag River that will span vast distances and cross deserts and mountains. The engineering challenges are immense. For the eastern and central routes, advanced tunneling techniques were required to pass under the Yellow River, creating passages capable of withstanding enormous water pressure and geological stresses. The Western Route, with its completion slated for 2050, faces even greater hurdles due to the fragile environments it will traverse. When fully operational, the South-North Water Transfer Project is expected to move a staggering 44.8 billion cubic meters of water annually equivalent to the entire flow of the Yellow River. It's a number that's difficult to comprehend, representing both the scale of China's water crisis and the audacity of its solution. Yet, as we marvel at these engineering feats, we must also consider the cost. The project's immense scale raises serious questions about its environmental impact and the human toll of such massive infrastructure. As we'll explore next, the price of progress may be higher, than anyone anticipated, affecting not just ecosystems, but entire communities and potentially sparking international tensions over shared water resources. Imagine waking up one day to find your ancestral home, your community, and your way of life scheduled for demolition. For hundreds of thousands of Chinese citizens, this isn't a nightmare, it's reality. The South North Water Transfer Project promises to quench the thirst of millions but at what cost to those in its path? Meet the Lee family, fourth-generation farmers in a small village along the central route. Their story is just one among the estimated 300,000 people displaced by this massive infrastructure project. As bulldozers approach their land, the Lis face an impossible choice. Leave behind everything they've ever known or resist and risk losing everything without compensation. The scale of this displacement is staggering. Entire communities are being uprooted, their homes and livelihoods submerged beneath reservoirs or bulldozed for canal construction. The government promises improved living conditions, modern amenities and economic opportunities for those who relocate. However, the reality on the ground tells a different story. Many displaced individuals report feeling abandoned and unsupported after relocation. The promised compensation often falls short, leaving families struggling to rebuild their lives in unfamiliar surroundings. Jobs are scarce, and the skills that serve them well in their rural communities don't always translate to their new urban environments. The cultural cost is equally devastating. Ancient villages, 
some with histories stretching back centuries, are disappearing forever. These aren't just collections of buildings, they're repositories of traditions, customs, and ways of life that have been passed down through generations. As water fills the reservoirs, it doesn't just submerge land, it drowns cultural heritage. Protests have erupted in some areas, with residents voicing their frustration over inadequate compensation and the lack of meaningful engagement from authorities. These tensions highlight the human rights concerns surrounding such large-scale infrastructure projects. How do you quantify the value of ancestral lands or compensate for the loss of community ties built over generations? The story of one ancient village slated for submersion encapsulates this cultural loss. This settlement, with its traditional architecture and rich folklore, has stood for over a thousand years. Soon, it will exist only in memories and photographs, its stones and stories swallowed by the waters of progress. As we weigh the benefits of this massive water diversion project against its human costs, we must ask ourselves, is this the price we're willing to pay for development? Can the water security of millions justify the upheaval of hundreds of thousands? These are not easy questions, and the answers will shape the future of China's landscape and its people for generations to come. The South-North Water Transfer Project stands as a testament to human ingenuity and ambition. But as we marvel at its scale and potential, we must not forget the very real human stories unfolding in its wake. The true measure of this project's success may not be in cubic meters of water moved but in how it balances progress with preservation and development with dignity. The South-North Water Transfer Project stands as a testament to human ambition and engineering prowess, offering hope for millions facing water scarcity in northern China. Yet, as we've explored, this massive undertaking comes with significant costs, both human and ecological. The project's ability to move vast quantities of water across the country is undeniable. However, experts warn that its long-term sustainability remains questionable, especially in the face of China's growing population and increasing water demands. The displacement of communities, loss of cultural heritage and potential ecological disasters loom large over the project's promised benefits. As we reflect on this monumental effort to reshape nature, we're left with a profound question. Can human ingenuity truly overcome the imbalances of the natural world, or are we simply creating new problems in our attempts to solve existing ones? The South-North Water Transfer Project may provide water to thirsty regions, but at what cost to future generations and the delicate ecosystems we all depend on?